Yo, what's up guys? Aloha. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how I make my sabiki rig or what some people here in Hawaii call them, damashi rig. Um, I figure I'll show you guys how I make mine because I think mine is a little bit different from what everybody else is using. I think most mostly everybody is using some form of uh, the uh, dropper rig or some modification of a dropper rig. Uh, it's a good rig, uh, it catches fish and uh, it's strong, but um, one thing about this style or this technique is that uh, you can use uh, a different main line and uh, a different branch line. So you can use a heavier main line to uh, support all the weight of all the bait you're catching and lighter branch lines for presentation. Um, but before I get into the building the rig, I wanted to show you guys what we here in Hawaii use, or what most of us here in Hawaii use to catch our bait. So um, first off, this is what I use, a size 6 uh, limerick gold hooks for the flashiness. Catch those, uh, those uh, fishies, fishies eyes. And um, this is what we use on those hooks. To attract those uh, fish. Um, we have a variety of uh, manufacturers who make these baits. These are all like uh, maybe three or four brands here. And they're all soft plastic. They come in a variety of colors. Uh, they come, uh, uh, what do you call, um, glow-in-the-dark versions. Uh, different shapes, different sizes. But uh, this is what I use to catch bait. And um, we also use beads on top of the hooks. This is, uh, we usually use red beads. You can get them at the uh, craft store or Ben Franklin or whatever craft store you guys have in your guys' local area. And we also use um, glow-in-the-dark beads to, uh, depending on what we're catching and uh, what time of day or what time of night that we're catching it. So, yeah, so... Um, that's what we use to uh, tip our hooks with, or to build build the rigs with. So let's get to the building of the rig. First off, um, I'd like to show you guys how I snell my hooks. Um, this is a 20, oh, 30 pound test, just for um, demonstration purposes only, but hopefully you guys can see it. But um, I just thread the line through the front of the hook, out the back, and maybe cut off a 16 inch piece of line, just for extras, just in case I'm too short. But um, just bring the uh, line off, the back of the shank of the hook. Make sure you have enough to uh, wrap around the sh the shank, maybe like uh, eight times. Pinch it at the end. Form a small loop. Pinch it again, and then start wrapping one, two, three, four. Sorry about the curly line. Five, six, seven, eight. And hold everything together and then insert the tag in through the loop that you made and pull the main branch line just to close that loop up a bit so you can uh, so the tag end can't run away and then just snug it up a bit and so I get it up a bit, a little bit more, and then pull that bunch up to the eye, and then finally tighten it. There you go. So um, cut that tag in, not too close, but not too far. Also, you don't want it impeding the way when you um put the baits on. Usually, a long tag in is gonna is gonna prevent you from 
pushing that uh, plastic bead all the way up to the eye. But anyway, I usually make around like 20 of these at one sitting. Um, I don't like to uh, make these uh, branch lines every time I make a sabiki rig. So I want to have some extras on the side. So just in case uh, I want to make a sabiki rig because... Uh, the one I was using earlier got trashed and I like to have uh, a couple of these branch lines in my tool toolbox uh, for quick repairs of my uh, sabiki on the water so yeah uh, that's my uh, snelled hook and then we're gonna take uh, the main line Oh, I forgot to mention, um, most of my rigs I use uh, fluorocarbon and my main line I use a 16 pound test fluorocarbon and the branch lines I use 8 pound test. So um, just imagine this, this end is the top, so this is uh, going to the rod tip. I just usually just make a simple surgeon's loop. Two times over, one, two. I found that it's strong enough, even for uh, when something big comes by and hits the sabiki, it still handle it, handles it. And then trim. And then I usually make my uh, the main line as long as the pole. And uh. Yeah, as long as a pole and it depends on uh, how big my loops are at each end. But uh, I make loops on each end, one for the, to hook onto the swivel on the top of the, at the end of the main line. And another loop at the bottom to uh, loop through a, um, a sinker. Okay, let's get to the... Uh, making of the uh, sabiki rig so um, I'm gonna make a double overhand knot one two and you gotta determine where you want your first branch to hang off of so with this you can just make the loop a little bit big like this enough to stick your thumb or finger through and you can locate that that knot so just figure out where you want it let's just say I want it right there kind of lube uh, that part some spit and then once you determine where you want that first branch you tighten that double overhand knot until you make a figure eight looking deal at on the line so it's like that hopefully you guys can see that okay so now you take your branch lines and you thread it to the top of that first loop the upper loop make sure you enter the line from the top of the rig and not the bottom or else it won't hang correctly so again thread it through the bottom I'm through to the top and then out the other loop at the bottom okay now what you're gonna do is pull that branch line All the way up to the uh, double overhand knot. Okay, as close as you can get to that knot. Now you're gonna make a, a uni knot with the tag in. So you just make a as small as you can. Uh, again, it depends if uh, you make it too big, the branch is gonna be longer. If you make it small, it's gonna be closer. So I like mine short. I mean, I like my branch lines short, prevents tangles and 
uh, it doesn't seem to um, take away from the presentation of the, the lure. So again, pull it all the way up to the, the knot. And then you do a uni knot. Four wraps is about enough. Four or five wraps. One. Two. Three. Four. Let's just do four. And then lubricate and then just hold the hook and then slowly tighten that knot okay not too tight you still got to drag that knot all the way up to the other knot on the main line Maybe just a little bit more. Okay. Now, hold on to your main line. <clears throat> Excuse me. Grab the hook. Be being careful not to poke yourself. And then just drag that knot up to the other knot. Now you can go ahead and cinch it down a little bit more. Same with the uh, main line knot. Then drag it some more. Oops, pulled the wrong one. There you go. Tighten it up. Trim the tag. Not too short because uh, you got to allow for slippage. And then there you go. As you can see, um, the way the line exit, uh, exits out from the top, it holds the, the hook away from the main line, which prevents tangles. And, uh, and, and that's a pretty heavy hook right now. So imagine if you had a lighter hook, uh, a proper hook. But yeah, there you go. That's your first branch and then um, do your uh, figure out your spacing and then tie another knot and another knot and another knot you can also tie those uh, double overhand knots ahead of time uh, and and then and then thread your uh, branch lines in if that makes it easier for you okay so that's my sabiki rig. That's how I make it. Uh, another, <clears throat> just say you, you happen to hook into something big, and it breaks your one of your branches or a couple of your branches. Boom! Oh, that one's gone. You still have this knot here, right, right here. That's the reason, one of the reasons why I make extra <clears throat> branch lines is because of this. You can do quick repairs on the water with these uh, spare branch lines. So this is just what I do. Doesn't have to be uh, too close to the first knot, but just make sure it's above that knot because that knot will stop this from sliding all the way down. And then kind of judge how much how long you want the branch line and then you just do a couple of half hitches it helps to have tension on the line too maybe from your pole from the sinker at the other end hanging in the water that's one And it's easier with a light line too, so not this heavy 30 pound test. So that's two. 
And let's do one more. Three. Make sure you cinch down each knot while pinching those knots. Okay, now you get your tag in, come around, and then you do a locking knot. Okay, make sure everything's tight. And then drag this knot down to the knot where the broken branch came off of. And then trim, allow for slippage again. There you go, a repaired sabiki, so you don't um, still have a lot of hooks to catch the bait. So there you go, that's how I make my sabiki rig or damashi. Um, hopefully this helps you guys, um, especially those of you who are considering making you guys own instead of buying all the time. And just for kicks, if you guys want to try and make your guys own. But yeah, this is how I make mine. It's pretty easy. Uh, again, hopefully this helps you guys. Aloha. Tight lines. And please subscribe. Please like my video. And I'll catch you guys later. See ya.